Okay, here we go. So what we did before um, up to exam two was this process, right? You know how fast something is changing. You want to know how much of it you have. So we started with exact rate of change. You know the process. Approximate rate, approximate accumulation to exact accumulation, and that with that integral function, we are in the right to have this fast track of exact accumulation from exact rate of change. That was our integral function. Okay? So now we're turning the tables, and we're going to start with an exact accumulation function. From that, build an approximate accumulation, approximate rate of change, so that we can have exact rate of change from exact accumulation. You know how much of something you have. You want to know how fast it's changing. That's our new endeavor, reversing the process. Okay. So the question is, where do exact accumulation functions come from? So now we're starting with an exact accumulation function. What's that? Where does it come from? Where do we find these? What was another name for accumulation? What is accumulation about? Okay. Okay, summing up it's a change to get what? Like a total like a total amount, right? A total amount of something. That's what we're saying by accumulation. So these are the functions you've been dealing with your whole math career. Okay? Accumulation functions is just a different kind of way of looking at the same at the types of functions you've been looking at for years and years in previous math courses. Okay, for instance, area of a square. So area of a square is x squared. And so you can think about that as you plug in a side, it gives you the area. You plug in a side length, it gives you the area. Or you can think about it as accumulation, right? So how did that area come to be? Well, it came to be bit by bit by bit by bit. So both of these are expressions of the area of a square, either just as, a, some, as an amount, or you can think of it as accumulation at some rate up to the, up to the current amount. Okay. Similarly, volume of a sphere. Okay. So volume of a sphere can be thought of as an amount, and that amount can be thought of as having accumulated from zero. Okay. So as an amount function, as an accumulation function. So any function that gives the exact amount of one quantity as a function of another is an exact accumulation function. That's what, that's any amount function can be thought of as an accumulation function, All right? And therefore, it can be represented as an integral. We just don't know what the rate of change function is, okay? So we can represent it as an integral at the, that of the accumulation of volume at some rate. But if we are starting with accumulation, then we don't know what the rate function is, but that's what our journey is, to figure out what is the rate function given an accumulation function. <coughs> Okay, does that make sense? So, where do accumulation, exact accumulation functions come from? Any amount function. The, the functions you've been dealing with your whole math career. Now we just have a different perspective on those as an accumulation function where the accumulation of that amount is occurring at some rate of change that we don't know, and the, our goal now is to figure that out. Okay, so... Square. So here is an exact accumulation function for the area of a square as a function of its side length. Okay? So here we talked about, so what's our next step? To build an approximate accumulation function. So here's an example of an approximate accumulation function. So what kind of function is that? Just in general, what kind of function is that approximate accumulation function? Piecewise. Linear. linear, piecewise linear, the same as we had before, right? Piecewise linear, same as before. Okay, so each segment of that piecewise linear is based on a constant rate of change that has the same change in y as the exact function, the exact accumulation function. So, for instance, for this segment right here, this first segment, that is based on the constant rate of change that has this change in y right here which is the same change in y as our original function. Do you see that? 
So what's the key idea here? If that's the, that blue segment is based on the constant rate of change to get the same change in y as the original function, what is that? Not, well, that's not, not, not speed here, but average. average rate of change, right? That's what we just worked on. Average rate of change is the constant rate of change to achieve the same change in output for the given change in input. So building this approximate accumulation function is going to be a matter of calculating and using average rates of change. Okay, so that was... Uh, this one is for a delta x of 1. So here's delta x of 0.5. What do you notice about these average rates compared to the last ones? Doing a better job hugging the curve, right? These are constant rates that are doing a better job reproducing the exact accumulation function. OK. So. The exact accumulation function, this one gives the area of a square of side length x. Your first task is to figure out what the rule is for that function, and that hopefully should be quick and easy. So this is question, question zero here. Question zero, determine the rule that outputs the area of a square given the input of side length. Okay, And then I want you to find these four average rates shown that are all based on a delta x of 0 0.5. And then review. So now once you have those four average rates, can you write the approximate accumulation function and the approximate rate function in piecewise form? So we did this a month ago. Once you have those rates, can you write those piecewise, piecewise functions? And then our next goal will be to write the approximate rate function in one expression, not piecewise, in one expression. Okay, so you've got some work to do here on these problems. We'll walk around and help you. Starting with accumulation, we're going towards developing, figuring out what the rate is. That's what we're about. <coughs> Okay, so, so how are we going to get the actual average rate of change, say, from 0.5 to 1? How are we going to get the average rate of change starting at x equals 0.5 to 1? Okay, yeah, we need, the, we need the starting and ending. We need this y value here, and we need this y value here to get the change in y. Where are those y values going to come from? Area of the square. Area of the square, right? So we're building this... Piecewise, these segments are based on the x squared, the red function, the, the one, the, the curve x squared function. Okay, so what is the y value when x is 1? One? 1, 1 squared, right? And what is the y value or the area when x is 0.5? Right, so it would be 1 squared minus 0 0.5 squared. That's the change in y corresponding to this average rate from 0.5 to 1. Or, sorry, so you could have written area, area 1, 
minus area 0 0.5. Okay? But to get the average rate of change, it's going to be divided by delta x, which in this case is 0 0.5. Anybody got that? 1 minus 0.25 is 0.75. 0 0.37? Uh, no, no. 1.5? Multiply by 2. Okay. Okay. 1.5. So that's an average rate of change. That's a constant rate of change. So what would the units be? 1.5 what per what? What per what? So it would be like area unit per length unit. So it would be area per length unit. Because it'd be del it's delta y over delta x. OK, so that's, that's 1.5. So we could get the other one similarly. Anyone? Let's get k1, k3, and k4. We won't go through it, but it's the same thing here. For each one of these, you find the change in y over that interval divided by the change in x. That gives you the constant rate that achieves the same change in y for the given change in x, average rate of change. OK, what was k1? 0 0.5? Yes. k3? 3. This is 2.5? And K4. This is what I'm hearing. Do we have consensus? Is 3.5 correct? Yes. Okay. So you get it the same way you got these. The change in Y would be 2 squared, or A area of 2 minus area of 1.5 divided by 0.5. The average rate of change in that interval from 1.5 to 2. Okay, so what is the approximate accumulation function? So I'll do that up here in black, say. So our approximate accumulation function, so say, what should we call that? Um, we'll call it AA. And I, don't, I won't have room there. I'll move over. Okay, so what will it be? So we know it's going to be a piecewise linear function. We've done these before. So we need our k1. What is k1? 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times? x minus 0. x minus 0 plus 0. And that would be, so this, I'm not going to write the intervals, but They go there, okay? So you need to have those. Where does that happen from? It happens from 0 to 0 0.5. Okay, and then? One point five. 1.5? Yeah. Times x minus Zero. 0 0.5 plus? A. This a 0.5. A of A, 0.5. Then we need that's from that's on the interval from zero point five to one. And then we'll have two point five from x minus one to plus a of a of one. And then three point five x minus one point five plus a of a of one point five. Okay, and but again, you need to have this, those intervals specified for which which part which rule governs given a given input, right? So from zero zero to 0.5 is the first line. From 0.5 to one is the second. From one to 1.5 is the third. 1.5 to two is the fourth line. Questions on that? Okay, so then the approximate rate function, piece of cake, right? Its approximate rate function would be. 
So I'll call this R of A. We just write it down, right? So from 0 to 0 0.5, our approximate rate is 0 0.5. From 0.5 to 1, approximate rate is 1.5. No, this is four different expressions. This is piecewise. No, this is number two. So number two had two parts. So 0 0.5 less than x less than or equal to 1. And then 2.5. And then 3.5. 1 is less than x less than or equal to 1.5. 1 1.5 less than x less than or equal to 2. So... What is our goal now? We want to write this the approximate rate function in one expression. We want to write that in one expression. Any questions on numbers one and two? Your tasks down here. What we just did here. The approximate accumulation function, approximate rate function, so going backwards, the only new thing we've had so far going backwards is we needed this idea of average rate of change. To get those segments, those are based on the con their constant rates of change that achieve the same change in y for the given change in x, right? Really important idea. So what about writing this approximate rate in one expression? What did we do before for that? We had like step, right? Step was? R of left of x. Can we do that here? Yeah. Is that all we need to do? There's no, rate. There's no rate function. We're trying to find the rate function. See? Before, we made the step function based on the rate function that we knew. We don't have a rate function. We're trying to, we're trying to get the rate function. So we can't do this. We can't do this because we don't know what that rate function is. That's our goal is to find that rate function. So this doesn't work. For the reverse journey. Okay, any questions before I go to the next screen? Okay, so writing the rate, approximate rate function in one expression. So this is, this could be any delta x, okay? This could be any part of that, that area curve. So we, so we don't know. All we know is that this right here This is delta x. Similarly, I don't know where this comes down. Maybe here. That's the next delta x, okay? If that's in the right place. So we're just going to come along. What? So the function that we want is given an x value, some current value of x, we want the output of our function to be the rate of change on the segment. That, this is the average rate of change for the current interval. So the input is x, output is the average rate of change for the current interval. And that will generate then this, that piecewise rate of change function that we had on the previous screen. I'll put the average rate of change for current interval. So what did I call that? RA? So in its most general form, what will this rule do? It's, it's calculating average rate of change. So what will the rule in its most general structure be? If it's calculating average rate of change for any given x value, just in a general sense, what will the rule look like? Change in y over change in x, right? So this, the rule will basically be change in y over change in x. So that it calculates an output of an average rate of change for the current interval. Okay, but we, we need this to all be in terms of 
the input vari variable x, the current value of x. This whole thing has to be in terms of x. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to get the change of y strictly in terms of x? Well, that would, but, but k is the thing we're trying to find. We don't know k. This, this whole thing is k. We're trying to generate k, so we can't use k. The whole, the whole expression is k. That's the output. That's the thing we're trying to do. So change in y. OK, final value y. So we need this. We need this y here. Say y2, y final, minus y initial. So let's start with y initial first. Here I am, I got the current value of x. How am I going to get the y value for this x? Right? That's what I want. I want the y value for this value of x. That will be my y initial for this interval. Who has learned something this semester? How am I going to get the y value of this value of x? Yeah. Yeah, so someone said over two. Yeah, we're going to use left x. So we got to get that left x value. And what we're going to do with that left x value? Plug it into the area function. So this is y initial, right? So we're going to have y final minus y initial. So y initial is going to be area of what? Let's call it, so the red one, this, this right here, we're going to call it, let's call it f, the left. So f. If x is the area function, it'd be easier to write. Is that okay? Yeah. So now that's our area function. We want the area not at x, but we want the area at left x. So that is our y initial. That's our y initial. Okay, so now we need y final. Okay, so we could do f of right x, but it, it's that's inter we can we do it without introducing a new function? So now we've chosen left x. Can we do it just by sticking with left x? Good. Yeah, so now f of left x plus always just not enough room, right? Let me try again. F of left x, still going to miss, plus delta x minus. Ah. <laughs> So many keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so what is that? So this x value here is left x. This x value is left x plus delta x. So we need the change in y for those x values. The change in y for those x values. So we're taking f of left x plus delta x minus f of left x. So that gives us the change in y that we want. Divided by delta x. <coughs> so this thing right here is the same as that approximate rate function that we built by actually having the, <coughs> the values. Those values were based on delta x of 0.5. So this works for any delta x. So any delta x that we pick, this will get us, it, within each interval, it will generate a constant rate. right? So within each interval, we'll get the same rate, that average rate for that whole interval. And then when x 
So when the current value of x goes into the next interval, it will give us the next average rate. OK, so, so I told you the reverse journey would be a lot quicker. We've already got an expression for the approximate rate function. All we have left to do is now from approximate rate get exact rate. And what will that be a matter of? Yeah, so if we make, it's going to be the same thing as before. So when delta x gets very small, this becomes, the, we get the exact rate function. Questions on that expression that calculates the approximate rate, right? So that's going to generate a step function, right, of constant rates on intervals. Because as long as the current value of x stays at a certain interval, that value will be the same, that value will be the same, and that value will be the same. So you get a constant throughout every interval, a constant rate of change. Can I erase and go on? So just as a summary here, okay, so we start with exact area. What comes next? Approximate, which is based on what? Average rate of change allows us to build approximate area. So we have the exact area, we do average rates that builds up an approximate area function from that. Can you see that? Let me turn off the side. This was the function that we just wrote the expression for. The one on the left, an approximate rate function. Constant rate of change, constant rate of change, constant rate of change. And those constant rates are the average rates which formed our approximate accumulation function. So uh, let me just show you, it's right there, there it is. That's what I'm graphing on the left, and that's the thing we just found. f of left of x plus delta x minus f of left of x over delta x, approximate rate function. Okay, cards.